Well, welcome back to another fun chapter in automotive history. And today what we're going to do is talk about one of the worst inventions in automotive history, at least from my perspective, and that is the so-called rim blow steering wheel. And yes, I said that right. It was called the rim blow steering wheel. Now, this was a very short-lived design that was put on vehicles in the late 60s through early 1970s and then was gone almost as fast as it was introduced, likely for a number of reasons that we're going to discuss. You certainly don't see it today, but I believe the overall philosophy was a good one, and that was that most cars at this point had some sort of a horn ring that you would deploy or touch to activate the horn. You can see here on this 68 Mercury, the horn ring across the lower portion of the wheel. And then this beautiful 1969 Imperial steering wheel that has the horn ring that goes around the entire four-spoke design. I just think this is one of my favorite wheels of all time on this 69 Imperial. But I digress, as I usually do. Let's get back to discussing the rim blow steering wheel. But the thought was that if you had to depress the horn ring, you were moving your hand a decent amount to try to reach it in some cases. And if you had a car that had the horn activated by the center horn pad, like on this 1967 Eldorado, you had to take your hand off of the rim to activate it. And designers and engineers thought that there was a better solution, and so they introduced that rim blow steering wheel. And the way that it would work was that you would effectively just pinch the rim and that would blow the horn. So you'd squeeze the rim with your thumb, the inner portion of the rim with your thumb. The outer portion didn't have the activation feature, and that would activate the horn. It sounded like a good idea in principle, but in practice it really had quite a few flaws. But before we get to those, let's talk a little bit of the history of this particular steering wheel design. I believe it was first introduced by Cadillac in 1969 and General Motors in general in 1969. You could get it on a number of GM vehicles. And it was used for a few model years on many GM vehicles, though I believe by 1971 it was pretty much gone. I think it was just a 1969 and 1970 model year thing. And it was optional equipment on most of the GM cars. As I mentioned, it was standard in the Cadillac, though. You can see this 70 Buick Electra has the rim blow wheel. Again, has that flexible rim on the inner portion that you would pinch to activate the horn. But you could also get it on an Oldsmobile, and I think Oldsmobile thought that they were clever trying to disguise the steering wheel you just saw by rotating it 180 degrees and putting it upside down, a little bit different overall center pad on it. But, well, we know what Oldsmobile did, kind of similar to what Dodge did with the taillights on the Dodge Durango and the Dodge minivan when it was first introduced. They were just inverted by 180 degrees. So I believe GM introduced this technology for the domestics in 1969. And then in 1970, Ford really took that and ran with it and introduced it on some of their lineup. You can see here this 1970 Continental Mark III with the rim blow wheel and a beautiful three-spoke design. Now, interestingly, on your Fords, while they did have rim blow as the standard equipment on the Lincolns, as an example, if you got cruise control, you didn't get the three-spoke wheel, you got the two-spoke wheel that was really shared across the entire Ford lineup. That three-spoke design was unique to Lincoln. So if you actually got the standard wheel, you got a Lincoln unique wheel. If you got the cruise control, you got a wheel design that was used across the entire Ford lineup. That cruise control wheel also had the rim blow feature, and Ford kept that all the way through the mid-1970s. Even my 1974 Mercury Marquis Brougham still has the rim blow wheel, although if you got the standard wheel by that point, the rim blow feature was gone, and it just had a horn pad that you would squeeze to activate the wheel. So while GM ditched the rim blow wheel after the 1970 model year, Ford continued it for a number of years on cruise control equipped cars. And then Imperial also followed suit in 1970 and introduced their rim blow wheel, which would continue on for several years, I believe through the 1973 model year. In any case, well, what were the pitfalls of this and why did it fail? Well, first of all, it sounded like a good idea because your hand or your thumb was very close to activating the horn and presumably could activate it more quickly 
Then if you had to push the horn pad or you had to push a horn ring. And so that was the thought behind it. But in reality, first of all, the wheel just didn't quite feel right, particularly on the GM cars. The outer surface was the same as the regular steering wheel, but the inner portion of the rim being flexible, there was this lip in between the fake wood grain trim, as an example, and that soft rubbery portion that you would pinch. And it just didn't really feel quite right in your hand compared to the standard solid plastic wheel. So I think people didn't like the way that the GM wheel felt. The Chrysler and Ford approach did not have the similar pitfall in that regard. They had a smaller, thinner area that you would pinch. And so the wheel generally felt pretty similar as compared to the GM wheel. But the problem with those was that thin area that you would pinch was right about where your hand would grip the wheel in the event you were parallel parking or you were going around a corner. And sometimes you would embarrassingly honk the horn as a consequence when you were going around the corner or you were parallel parking. And well, that's not something that people want. And third, I would say the reliability of the switch for the rim blow wheel wasn't that great. It just wasn't as reliable as the standard activation that was accompanied with the horn pad or the horn ring. And so for those reasons, the rim blow wheel really kind of came and went about like eight track tapes pretty fast, especially for the company that I believe first introduced at GM. As I said, they only kept it around for a couple of model years before they ditched it, likely due to customer complaints. And for whatever reason, Ford and Chrysler hung on to it for a little bit longer than GM did. Now, I also share this with the audience because if you're looking to buy a classic, particularly an up-level classic, and the horn isn't working, you may not know that the horn is not supposed to be activated by depressing the center horn pad because there is no horn pad in the center of the wheel. There is the rim blow feature. And as I said, these aren't all that reliable. I would say they've aged a bit like milk as time has gone on, i.e., really not all that well compared to the more standard horn activation methods. But when they do work, it's kind of cool and a feature that you can show your friends because, well, no cars have this today. Everybody's kind of got the standard to press the horn pad and the horn activates. But back in the old days, you could even have some strange ways of activating your horn. I also like the feel of the plastic wheels, those kind of hard plastic wheels that are relatively thin rim on these classic cars. It seems to me that modern steering wheels have become too fat and they're often trimmed with leather that, well, after a short bit of time, just doesn't look all that great and tends to wear, I would say, not all that well. Whereas the hard plastic, so long as you keep the car out of the sun, it seems to wear well. Some of the cars, they do crack, I will say, though. In any case, hope you enjoyed this spotlight on one of the worst automotive inventions of all time, the rim blow steering wheel. If you did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. And what do you think is the worst automotive invention of all time? Put a comment in the comment section. Thank you.